How'd you land that job originally? Because you move in 81, you come to New York, then you get picked up by SNL in what, 85? 85. How does that, well, how do you go from doing jingles and engineering to that? Um, well, I, 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 I did a, um, I did a lot of different things and I, I sort of made some mark. I, I took a tour in 83 with David Bowie, did the Serious Moonlight tour. So, and was that I, and Borneo I, horns? That, that, that was the, the three saxophone section, yeah, that I spoke about before. Um, uh, Steve Elson and Stan Harrison and I were the horn section for that, that tour. Um, and, and when I came back, there was, I, 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 I had made some connections and I was working more and I was doing a fair amount of recording work. Um, so my name was sort of in the mix of things, you know, it was, um, and also, um, um, I, oh, I'd done this gig with G.E. Smith. I was on, on a Hall & Oates live album, um, live video. I was a uh, Eddie Kendricks and David Ruffin from The Temptations um, joined Hall & Oates for some songs and they performed at the Apollo Theater. Uh, and they did mostly Motown music. Um, um, and they needed a horn section. They called me, I booked the horn players, did the recording, played a solo on one of the songs. Uh, one of the songs, I think it got to be one of the singles on the record. They, uh, uh, Daryl and John called me back to do some more gigs and I did another recording with them. And G.E. Smith was the, the guitar player in the band. Now G.E. had been married to Gilda Radner at one point. Um, and I think he'd worked on a show that she worked on and he and, he, he and Lauren were acquaintances. And um, and he got asked to be the band leader for the show. And Howard Shore had come back and Howard used to be in this band called Lighthouse, which was like a Canadian horn band, you know, and we were sort of out at the same time as them with Tower of Power. And he was familiar with Tower of Power and somewhat familiar with me and, and um, uh, and GE recommended me to, to do the show and Howard agreed. And that was that, um, uh, I, I showed up at an audition, but I think I sort of already had the gig before that happened. I, my, my sound was right for the show. They've always had this sort of junior Walker esque, uh, saxophone lead at the front and then the back of the show. And, um, and I, that was the style I played in. So I was sort of a natural for it. Um, Did they give you a chance to come in and at least sub for a couple shows or watch before you had to come in? No, just did the show. I, I, I played with, um, that, that spinoff band from Duran Duran with, um, Robert Palmer, uh, uh, what are they called? Uh, the, um, power station. Um, and I'd done the show once with them as a, as guest music. So I'd been there um no we just did it um uh, it was terrifying <laughs> i shook the whole show the first couple of shows um you know really you're, well you're playing for eight million people you know it's mm -hmm. like and it's not there's no there's no uh, can i punch that in can i do that over again there's none of that and it's and it's it's an unforgiving thing you know if you if you squeak or 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 play a wrong note it's like evident to the entire world and i had a very very um audible role and i couldn't sort of conceal myself inside the horn section i was playing the saxophone solo so do you ever go back and watch the replays of those first shows it's interesting you ask um you know we're doing the show in a very interesting way these days um and i i've been staying home as much as possible because you don't want any more people in the studio than have to be there mm -hmm. And one of the things they provided us with is a way of watching the rehearsals. But in addition to that, there's a, a, a raft of old shows up on the same application. And I went back and looked at some things just because I was curious. I hadn't seen them since I did them a lot of times. And uh, I went back and lo looked at some old shows. It's very, very, very strange thing to do um, to see yourself 36 years ago. Um, playing. Does it make you miserable to listen to yourself back then? Are you like, ah, I did pretty good? Uh, uh, it, it doesn't bother me that much. Um, um, I, I feel like I do it better now, but I didn't, I, I wasn't, um, I, I was, my intent was right. My, my intention was the correct one. You know, um, um, 
I, I wasn't very far off base. Um, and it was, it was, again, it was a very natural thing for me to do. It was a style of playing that I've been doing a lot of and, and focused on and was very comfortable with, um, you know, I, I love rhythm and blues saxophone playing. I, I find it um, exhilarating to me. You know, it's an area of jazz that is much overlooked and um, and uh, not mined in, in to the extent that it could be. It's a really, it's a, it's a beautiful art form. <laughs>